Hello beautiful souls, welcome back to Art of Awakening. This is Ona and thank you for joining me for this reading for October 2020. We'll start with a little bit of an energy update and then we'll end up with a, I'm going to do a four card reading this time to take us through the month of October. So when I felt into the energies of October 2020, um, what I was shown was like this vortex and this message that it's getting faster. Okay, so we do have, you know, there's so much going on in the world right now, so much going on, and there's a lot of pent up energy and some energy that isn't so pent up anymore, right? And uh, so there's just a lot, a lot of energy going on, and it's going to, we may see this starting to accelerate. Of course, it's kind of a, almost a given, given that we've got an election here in the United States coming up and there's a lot, a lot of tensions around that and it's only going to accelerate as we move more, um, you know, through the month. And so some of the guidance that I've been given around um, energies, they were telling me about um, kind of pent up energies and telling me that there's two ways to address these that, you know, remembering that energy cannot be destroyed, right? So this energy has, something's got to happen with it, right? Um, and especially when it gets to the point where it's actually moving, which is actually a really, really positive thing. You know, if nothing's moving and, it, and it's, you know, not in a good place, then that is a problem, right? So um, just as in healing, like in homeopathy, if you, they say that any change is, is a good sign, right? Um, when, when you start treating a, a patient, even if sometimes the symptoms appear to get worse, um, you know, just the change itself, right? So this, uh, even though a lot of these uh, ways that energies are moving right now uh, can be, are very chaotic and are, you know, not necessarily going in the direction we want to see them overall, just keeping the wider, wider perspective. Um, it, it is a positive thing, right? We've got things moving at least, right? And once they're moving, okay, so this comes to the second part of this message is that, okay, there's two ways to, once the energies are, you know, are moving, there's two ways to move them. If you're dealing with energies, you can either um, direct them somehow, right? Or move them or you can transmute them. And an energy can be transmuted, right, to be a lower vibration than what it is, or it can be transmuted to go higher vibration. It's actually very easy, it's easier to transmute energy and make it into lower vibration, right? Just as it's, you know, if you have um, a, a a card house or something, right? It's much, much easier to smash it down than it is to build it up. But it's a lot more constructive and ultimately it, it contributes to the greater good, right? To, to, to um, build things higher. So we're all dealing with these energies, right? And they may be within ourselves. They may be energies that are, you know, maybe have been sort of stuck in ourselves. And sometimes these things that are happening around us they they may feel disturbing, but they can actually be positive in a way that they're actually making us aware or shaking loose energies that may have been stuck in us for a long time. And and that's really the function of um, any kind of chaotic event, right? Is to <laughs> kind of shake things up. And so, but you know, for having this within ourselves, um, one is to be super super aware. And I'm going to share with you a. Um, this is a piece that I am working on right now. It's one of several pieces I've got in the studio going. Um, one of them is an angel commission, by the way, so thanks to that person who, who commissioned that. Um, but this is a part of a series of that I've done been doing over the past few years that I actually started a couple years ago on the all-seeing eye and this idea of awareness. Okay, so here's the eye in the center. It's almost like the eye of Shiva here, um, uh, vertical. And just all the energy flowing around, um, but it's super, super important to be kind of aware. And there's a difference between awareness and focus, and um, I'll probably go into a different video on that because it's super important. But just be aware that just because there's a lot of stuff going on, yes, you want to be aware of it. We don't want to be naive, and if there's like, <laughs> you know, stuff going on, we, we do want to be able to react appropriately, you know, to keep ourselves safe and all that stuff, right? Um, but it's also 
all this energy is just trying to, you know, it's all competing for our focus, okay? And so if we are, um, you know, if, if we're here and we're trying to raise the energy to here, and what keeps happening is instead of focusing on up here, we keep getting, you know, distracted by what's going on here, 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 and here. What that does is it either keeps us kind of stuck in the same place or it brings us down, right? And especially if we're starting to focus on stuff that's all down here, okay? So what we want to do is start raising our actual focus, what we're focusing on higher, right? To things that are higher vibrational. Okay, and we can do this through meditation. We can do it through prayer. We can do it through um, fun, right? Enjoyment. <laughs> okay, joy is one of the highest vibration emotions that there is. Okay, so whatever it is that brings you joy, that's something to focus on in this coming month, especially in probably you know and beyond as well. Okay, and it doesn't mean to exclude awareness of other things, but what we really want to be starting to focus on is things that are going to be raising our vibe because by raising our own vibe, we're contributing to raising the vibe of all of it, right? So I, I know it's it's not easy right now, and I also want to just thank all of you who are, uh, you know, holding holding to the map and and doing what you need to do to do your best to to keep your vibe high because it's so important. Every single one of you is making a difference, even if it doesn't feel like it, right? Um, but the little things that you do to keep your vibe high really really do add up all right so um, with that said I'm going to do a four card reading here for the month of October so I was hoping my little kitty Millie would join us for the reading oh here she comes so she may join us um, she's we got her a few weeks ago she hid in the closet for a few days but she's <laughs> she's become very um, come here, Bean. Come here, sweetie. There we go. Here she is, and hopefully she's not much of a lap cat, otherwise I'd put her in my lap. But she's really super friendly. So, Millie, you want to help me choose some cards? Um, all right. Okay, so I'm using actually four decks here. And the first deck is the Wisdom of the Hidden Realms deck by Colette Baron reed And we're going to use this to choose a card for the influence of... October, whatever the influencing factors, and this may show up as challenging factors and or allies. Okay, so we're just going to choose one card. Hey, Millie. One card out of this. And I think it is, let's see, this one. Okay, this is the Camel Boy. Um, all right, so here I'll show you the card. I love these cards, they're beautiful. Okay, and um, what she's saying is small steps, asking for help. I love the number, the number is 33. This is the number of Christ consciousness, okay? Um, and uh, so I really, really love that that came up. And also this idea of kind of being in the desert, right? The, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, kind of this, uh, scarcity right and a lot of us are feeling like that we're feeling isolated we're feeling like oh my gosh you know when's the last time I had a hug you know that that kind of thing this this dearth of stuff and uh, you know he's playing the flutes and he's got this it's kind of hard to see but it's almost I'm seeing this sort of beautiful orb around this flute and so there's this magic here of um, just you know rather than focusing on you know there's no water here in the desert he looks perfectly at home here in this desert on this camel and he's actually he's just playing right so never never underestimate the power of play and the spirit of play to shift energy okay and so I'm fe feeling like there's some you know calling for transmutation and this is the time, this is the time for light workers to really start to step up and start calling for transmutation. It starts within, starts within the self. So um, they're saying small steps, asking for help. This doesn't, you know, 
big, big changes. There's that old cliche that the journey of a thousand steps begin, you know, a thousand miles begins with a single step. And it's really, really true, especially when, you know, when we're talking about manifesting and, and, and spiritual, spiritual journey, it is. It, it does start small and um, so even just little things like you know play some music put on something upbeat um, ask for help like if we're really down in the dump sometimes it is really really hard to get ourselves and, and, and transmute that energy by ourselves sometimes we need a little assistance okay and I'm gonna um, tell you about a uh, my little workshop if you haven't heard about it um, in just a sec um, because, you know, joining, joining a workshop, um, calling a friend, um, signing up for an energy session, all these things, or it could be just little things, right? You know, if you find yourself frustrated, it, it, it doesn't even have to be spiritual. It's like <laughs> I, I was dealing with a frustration trying to figure out a, a thing on my website, and I'm finally like, you know what, I can go to Fiverr and <laughs> And hire somebody so I might be doing that this this week um, but little things instead of letting the frustrations um, you know build up you can't ask for help and other we are meant to be we are we are humans right we're meant to work together and uh, sometimes we don't always have to do things by ourselves remember you always have your your guidance right um, that that can can help even just pulling a card can shift your day change your day around so okay. this is the next card this is the protection card for october it is from the archangel michael oracle deck and um while i'm shuffling here if you hear something weird in the background it's because i we grew a bunch of Roma tomatoes this year, and I've got a bunch of them in the Instapot. They're cooking down into sauce, so that is the sound of sauce being made in the background. Bubbling, kind of in this, this big electric cauldron thing. <laughs> it's kind of fun. All right, so Michael asking for protection here for October and this is the one coming up oh my I love this it's you've created the situation you have the power to change it and this is true of each of us individually you know the situation that that you're in as an individual right now is it's like the result of your past energetic state right um which it can sound blaming, but don't take it as blaming, right? If you're in a place that you don't like, right? Because it is just showing that you may be shifting your energy a lot and you may not be quite seeing it yet, right? And that's where it comes back to these small steps because once we start shifting the energy, sometimes there's a lot of momentum, right, that goes on and, and things have to work themselves out through time. So understanding that even if things are not feeling so so hot for you right now, um, like I'm personally dealing, like my life is amazing in a lot of ways and has continued to become accelerating more amazing, but I'm still dealing with a lot of stuff in the, in the physical body, right? And so I, I, you know, it's a reminder for me too, is to remember that this is kind of the, the results of past actions and past decisions and past, um, you know, past things. And we have a power to change it, right? So whatever it is that, that you're feeling like still needs shifting, um, continue on whatever you're doing to shift it or maybe increase your awareness. What else needs to happen? What else needs to be shifted or transmuted in order to, you know, get the result so that once maybe in six months when you're looking back at this, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Right, and I'm in such a much amazing, better place now. Okay, it also helps to look back six months and say, Hey, you know, maybe there are some shifts that have really been amazing for you. Okay, and and enjoy that, take credit for that. Right, um, we each have the power, and collectively, we have the power. Right, collectively, we've created this whole collective situation, we do have the power to change it, and each of us does contribute each of our individual contributions does contribute to the whole to the collective so don't give up on the world <laughs> don't give up on the world because it is really shifting rapidly and i believe we're going to bring in some beautiful things in the next couple decades um, the next so. card is the i'm going to be using um a, a card from 
the Doors of Love and Light deck. My friend Rita Morgan, she's an energy healer. This is uh, her deck. And this is going to be the blessing card for this month. So just calling in a blessing for the month of October. Oh, because we all could use a blessing right now. And this is, oh, this is beautiful. This is um, number 35. And she's got this beautiful tree. It's like this tree of life. And there's these two swords, right? And, you know, the world is so polarized right now. The world is so polarized. And to recognize sometimes it's like, maybe it's time to put down the swords, right? So again, coming back to energy, right? You, the, these energies of polarity, right? The, the different political factions, the, the racial polarity, all this stuff. Consider if you're feeling this, pull, you know, kind of pulled into something or other and, and, and really, first of all, be aware of where your energy is at and where this energy is pulling you. And if this energy is pulling you into a fight kind of mentality, be aware that when we, you know, what's one of the, the ways that the energy wants to pull us in, right, is to get us to fight. And it's, this looks to me like the two swords have been put down, right? Um, it had just been, it's like truce, right? Let's just put our swords down. Um, because we can do a lot more to shift the situation through raising our vibe than we can through fighting, all right? Okay, so, so real quick here, looking at uh, Rita's guidebook about number 35. She says, untangling threads and laying down of swords. Um, this door is peacemaking with all the places of conflict in the land. Many lands have had thousands of years of conflict and thousands of years with unresolved issues. And this goes not only for the lands, but also for, um, you know, different... Um, the bloodlines, right? A ancestors. The peacemaking process begins with the laying down of swords, not only the physical weapons, but the words that attack. The isolation and the silence that hides the truth and the demeaning of value that makes less than of the other. Each enemy coming into the powwow of laying down of swords comes as equal. No one is left unheard and uncared for here. Each receives the energy that they require to allow the untanglement of the eons to unwind. So we are talking about this right now. This is what we're seeing, is we're seeing the untanglement of the eons. And if you can see through a lot of the chaos and see that there are starting to be conversations where people are starting to hear and listen, and, and yes, it's, it can be, <laughs> it's a lot of blame and shame going on, but listen and look between that right and listen and look for the the higher things that are coming out right the the where people are being heard right and this is a call to be one of those listeners and and just to witness sometimes we don't we can lay down the blame we can lay down the shame just witness there's a lot of power in witnessing somebody's experience and not trying to fix it but just being a witness and allowing them to express themselves and yourself too right without judgment okay and she goes on to say this is energy unlike peace talks there is no need for compromise for with energy all we need is the love and the support that we were denied we are sharing this supportive energy with all beings all places here and now all right so this is the blessing right just to <laughs> this blessing of and peace. finally i'm going to um end this reading with a card for action um and I'm going to pull one of my animal cards, uh, Spirit Animal Awareness cards here um, to see what animal wants to come forward and what they can teach us about an action for this month. And while I shuffle this, I want to invite you again to my workshop next week. It'll be next Thursday, October 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern. And it's a visionary art workshop, so it's just a way, again, to um, start kind of, um, first of all, visioning a, a beautiful, whatever beautiful beauty or fun or enjoyment, joy that you want to bring in, right? Um, we'll be meeting for an hour and a half. I'm going to be holding space and doing a guided meditation 
for you to allow your creative uh, muses to flow through you, um, your spirit guides, whatever guides want to um, speak with you and play with you through the visual art, right? And it's whatever art, you don't have to be an artist at all, right? You can use pencils, paints, watercolor, even if you're a different kind of artist. If you're a musician or a writer, just come and let the inspiration flow through. I'm holding space for that next week, so you're invited. It is by no nation. I'll leave the link to that above and as well as below. Okay, so this is the card and um, this is the action, right? It is sea lion and you can see him some, sort of just sunning himself, okay? Um, soaking in the rays, right? So this is an invitation to just allow yourself to hold yourself to the light absorb you know whatever positive warm sunshiny energy that you can from whatever source you can right grace under pressure um, uh, self-control right and also working with the subconscious uh, the sea lion dives down right so working with your intuition working with your guidance and maintaining that grace under pressure maintaining that sense of Breathe, right? Remember any of these sea creatures breathing, okay? They are masters of breath, okay? So um, just, uh, and they're also, they also could be very playful, right? Playing in the water. So the spirit of play and breath mastery, maintaining that sense of grace under pressure um, message for October. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll catch you again next time. Um, if you do feel like it, it might be helpful for you to have a little support through this month, um, I have a link below. I do offer uh, personal sessions as well. All right, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you again next time.